Hey, this is Malachi Church for the State. Walking kind of along an old railroad path. But also, just recently, we had a flash flood, and I talked about this on another video, but the guy lost his life. So he was just trying to get home. About to have a birthday. Went over a little bridge, and the water came rushing down. It took them about half a mile down the river, which in reality, it's kind of a little stream, but when it floods, it can get uh, pretty nasty very, very quickly, just like our lives can. But we always have a choice. Do we cross that bridge or do we wait on God? Now, I don't want to demean the soul that was lost on the bridge but I kind of want to use it as perspective of sometimes waiting on God and listening not getting caught up and wanting to do things so quickly that's why he says to rest that's why he sits you down by still waters walks you through a soothing area so you can rest and think before you act because sometimes what we do has tremendous consequences sometimes life-changing and you know that's happened in my life many times and in fact I'm still paying for some of them I think I'm on my last year it's my seventh year which I find it interesting how I can look back on the 14 years of my life, basically, and see seven years of plenty, seven years of hardcore lean. And I'm hoping that with the tie-in of this year being the fourth blood moon, a Shemitah year, and a year of Jubilee, that things will be a little bit better. And I'm sure they will, because I realize, and I think we all need to take heed of our life if we've had the opportunity to do such things, because unfortunately the man that lost his life in this river, it's really a stream. He didn't have time to reflect anymore. But we do, as survivors, even though even though it's been tough, you can still look back and reflect. And like I'm saying, I've had to do that. I've done that. I realize that. I can't wonder what could have been because, because that's kind of foolishness because it, it wasn't. I can, however, look and see how even though I had made my stupid little decisions, that kind of haunted me for a while, that God still has found a way to work around it. Fewer called, and many are called, but few are chosen. I'm not trying to say I'm a chosen one. But as I start to tell people, oftentimes my life, <laughs> I get a lot of dismay and no way and that's a bunch of BS you know I was in Mississippi about a month ago trying to get a job because it seems like even though I have a, a tremendous background in business I can't have I haven't been able to seem to get anything I will do a video on my year of dealing with churches and trying to get work amongst churches but I'll get into that later but I found it interesting how you know over the course of my life I've been an entrepreneur I've uh, held pretty de decent uh, trade jobs with welder fitter tooling guy I used to build big jigs as an entrepreneur I've had very successful companies 
I've been featured in the top business magazines of the world, Entrepreneur and Forbes magazine. <clears throat> in reality, supposedly, you know, values of you know, multi-million dollar type things. But it's been difficult. I've had more rejection letters than I can even count. Uh, and it's not about my hair or how I look, because, you know, if I get to the interview part, I tie my hair back or I'm, eh, I'll cut my hair to an extent. And I always try to look good. Uh, but most of the time I never even get a face interview anyway, so that's kind of a rel relevant subject. But I will say, I'm dealing with the Christian world, which I thought, well, you know, Hey, I've been a Christian all my life. I love sharing the Word of God with people. I've always had people in my life always contacting me, always asking me questions. I seem to be the first guy they call. So I thought, well, I enjoy evangelizing. I enjoy talking to people, especially the youth, telling them how to get their get things organized. You know, I started my first business was when I was 16. I bought my first house when I was 19. Never smoked cigarettes, never did drugs. So I figured, hey, but I have been in the music industry. I have been in industries where there's a lot of that stuff around and never partook of it. So I thought, hey, that might be a good uh, way to, uh, you know, be a light to the youth and say, you can do it too. You can have a very interesting, fulfilling life really doing things far beyond what other people could imagine and still not getting sucked into that lifestyle. But through the, uh, I don't know, close to 500 emails or 500 job applications and all these different things, all these church organizations or church corporations as I'm calling them, um, nothing, 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 nothing. And then recently, just the other day, I thought, well, I heard this guy on the radio and he was saying how his, his, his company is growing and they're looking for people. I thought, oh, why, why not? You know, I'll see what he has. He has a job for recording engineer. Well, what have I done since I was about 18 years old? I've owned three recording studios, still have one today. I've worked with some of the biggest names in music. So I thought, eh, I'll send him something. And so I make the resume so it suits what they want. I don't talk about too much about my um, overseas company or anything like that. I, you know, I, I, I know how to write a resume, trust me. <clears throat> um, but I get back a remark, not, uh, yeah, that sounds great, let's talk. No, it was, so what do you think you can do for us? I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. You're asking for somebody to be a recording engineer. Okay, I fit that bill, I can do that. I'm very quick at what I do. Always considered one of the best in everything that I do, actually. Not to boast, but that's just the way I am. Somebody asks me to work, I give 100%. No excuses. I'm always there before everybody else, and I'm usually the last one to leave within reason as long as you don't think that you can just abuse and use me. So, I find it interesting how <laughs> uh, that, well, I'm not finding it interesting. What I'm finding is it's very sad that so many so-called Christian organizations, and, and when I say so-called, I mean so-called. There's a lot of people that call themselves Christians that don't act that way. And if I was consulting with the businessman, I would tell him, you know, there are certain ways to respond uh, to people who are applying for jobs, and there are ways not to respond to people who are applying for jobs, because one way will get you sued. Especially in today's world, I won't sue anybody. I don't do that. I've only had to sue one person in my life. That's because he stole my business. I did win, but I wasn't happy because I didn't want to sue anybody in the first place, like I said. It's not my style, but I can be vocal, and that's just to let people know, hey, don't mess with me.
You know, I'm a good guy. I do what I say I'm going to do. I'll treat you fairly. You treat me fairly. I'll be happy. But when it comes to messing with my family life and taking away from my family, then, yeah, we're going to have ourselves some problems. So anyways, in the course of the year, I found it very, very interesting how um, so many of our religious organizations are, well, every time I say that, every time I say that I'm disappointed, then I have to remember Revelation. I have to remember that there were these letters that went out to these seven churches and only two, two of them found favor in God's eyes. And, and you know, that's not really, that's not really a good uh, percentage rate. <laughs> and that's just not about the, the churches of the past that John was talking about. That's the churches now, unfortunately. And Revelation talks about how they want to believe a lie. A lot of people believe in lies. So when you come out as somebody like me, I'm very, I'm very hardcore. I don't take any flack. I am easy going. I'm not here to beat up on people. But when it comes to dealing with, if I'm dealing with a pastor who claims to be leading a flock, and he's playing games, I'm not usually very nice. Because I will call you out. Because that's my duty to call you out. Get your nose back into the book. Start doing the right things. So I'm gonna close this uh, segment with this. If you're going through tough times, God will prevail. You also have to sit back and look at everything. And if anybody needs somebody like myself to help you out, work for your company, I will put a link of my resume below. Like I said, it's quite substantial. And I don't mind working for people. I know many people get afraid when they see what I've done. They don't think they can afford me, but that's never been the case for me. It's never truly been 100% about money. It's always been about do I believe in it? Do I think it's cool? Is it something, you know, am I working for trustworthy people? That's usually the key. Can I trust you? So, anyways, I'm going to leave that there. If anybody knows anything, that'd be nice because I'm kind of broke right now. But, um, but you know what? Even at all this stuff, even at being broke, even at losing everything that I had, a couple homes, multi-million dollar business, all these types of things, God's never left me. He just said, you know, I told you not to do what you did about 14 years ago, and then you decided to do it, so don't blame me. And then he says to me, he goes, I told you not to do what you did seven years ago, but you did it anyway, so don't blame me. And I'm not blaming him anymore. Because I can't. When you allow God to open up your eyes, you really can't blame him for nothing. All you can do is praise him. Anyways, Malachi Church for State signing out. I might do a condensed version of what I just said. Because I know people have an attention span of a gnat these days. They usually don't go past two minutes, and I think I've been talking for at least 12, 15 maybe. Anyways, you all have a great one. We'll talk at you later. I like I sign it out. Hug your kids, call your parents, go see a neighbor, repent and be baptized.
my people are slaves. Four hundred and thirty years have gone. Still they sing to carry on the ways that made them slaves. My people are slaves. I sent Moses to free the land. Take them from Pharaoh's hand, but they run right back as slaves. My people are slaves. I bring them freedom. They don't understand. They need laws. Taking hold of the name